This video has been very kindly sponsored by Squarespace. about the way that these were gonna turn out. I was worried the colors weren't gonna come out right. I will say the greens are a little more blue than they are in my painting. I would say that in my painting, the greens are definitely a little more yellow toned. It still looks incredible. Now all I gotta do is wait on the sticker sheets, which should hopefully be here by like Thursday, so I can pack on Friday, but looks so good. you and everything all of the time a little bit of everything all of the time apathy's a tragedy and boredom is a crime anything and everything all of the time could i interest okay so as you can tell my brain is just all bo burnham ear words ear worms i'm very out of practice with my like musical theater singing but i still like singing that song like a musical theater villain in my car it's very fun and like dramatic and great and I'm like, would I be able to make a, like an audition cut of this? I probably could. Um, it would just take a little bit of finagling. Today we are, I think I'm actually gonna spend like, I think I'm gonna spend like 20 minutes stamping envelopes because I'm gonna be having my Patreon stickers coming in, hopefully on like Thursday or Friday. And I just need to be able to start like packing those bad boys. So probably gonna stamp some envelopes. And then I was going to do some fan art stuff um i want to i'm constantly on my quest of like conquering my fear of fan art and so i've been really into ace attorney lately and so i might do some like apollo justice maybe clavier maybe some like clapalo stuff i would also love to figure out how to draw phoenix wright's hair it's impossible oh I might draw some genshin stuff i don't know um probably more persona stuff but i kind of want to I just want to lean into fan art things. I want to be more comfortable stylizing my favorite characters and like having more dynamic poses. So I might do some like pose studies off Pinterest, but then just use my characters for, use the characters as reference as opposed to like trying to draw the person that's in the actual photo. We'll see. First though, I'm going to stamp some envelopes because I need to. Also, it is so sweaty. It is so warm in here. Uh, I'm going to have the windows open, but hopefully you won't. I, I, I think the rest of this is going to be a voiceover. Maybe, I don't know, but um, I'm gonna have the windows open. So if you hear things happening outside, that's, uh, that's why. Envelope time. While I navigate through this small mountain of envelopes. I want to say two things. First off, I'm watching my best friend Oddly's stream on Twitch and y'all should go check him out. He's great. His streams are so chill. He's playing through SMT. He's playing through one of the SMT. I, I was just trying to remember which one. He's playing through one of the SMT games right now. And also his baby is the cutest baby. So go follow him if you're looking for more chill, fun, cool streamers to watch. And second of all, I want to say thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Y'all know the deal. Squarespace is the all-in-one platform where you can build the beautiful portfolio, website, online shop, what have you of your dreams. 
I've been using Squarespace for the past like three years now to host my own website and uh, run my shop from and I've loved using them. They have loads of e-commerce tools that make running a shop really easy. They have lots of beautiful templates to choose from. They're highly customizable and you don't need to know anything about code to make your website look lovely. And they have 24 seven customer support. So if you need them, they're there for you. If you have been looking to make a beautiful, lovely website of your own, you can go to squarespace.com for a free trial. And then when you are ready to launch your amazing website, you can go to squarespace.com slash Cheyenne Barton for 10% off your first purchase. Thank you again, Squarespace. Y'all are rad. Back to stamping I go. It, it, this is so tedious, but like I said, it's meditative and I'm going to be ordering some like pre-printed envelopes once I get through all of these blank ones that I have stored. So I won't have to do this for forever, but uh, I have to do it now. So uh, onward. Hello, it's voiceover Cheyenne. Hello, I feel so, <laughs> I always feel so um, awkward sometimes recording like long voiceovers for videos. I don't know, it's a, it's a strange thing. A anyway, hi, um, the rest of this video is gonna be me uh, drawing in my sketchbook. So I'm gonna be chatting like a little bit here and there, but I'm gonna have some lovely, beautiful classical music on. Um, of course, you can always just put me on mute and listen to your own stuff as you watch. But um, yeah, I this was such a good, oh, this was such a good sketchbook day. I have been, I've been drawing digitally so much just because like when I stream, um, what I do like drawing streams or co-working streams, I tend to draw digitally just because it's so much easier to stream my iPad. And so I've been drawing digitally a lot. And so it was very nice to just do a bunch of traditional stuff. Also, that hand is really good. I, I was kind of surprised. I was like, wow, I can, look at me. I can, I can kind of draw hands now. It's very exciting. Also, I know I said that at the beginning of this that I was like, I'm gonna draw fan art and I'm gonna use reference, but I'm mostly gonna draw fan art. That doesn't really happen. I draw a little bit of fan art, but mostly I'm just referencing photos off Pinterest. I'm mostly just referencing photos off Pinterest and um, drawing from those. 
I think pretty much all of the photos I use you should be able to find either on my art reference or things to draw Pinterest board. But yeah, it's mostly just, you know, um, yeah, lots of photos of beautiful strangers. You know how it is. <gasps> I, I, uh, how are you? I, <laughs> this is what I mean when I say that sometimes voiceovers can get a little awkward. I am currently drinking a Arnold Palmer, an Arnold Palmer. For those of you that don't know what that is, it is a sweet tea and lemonade. Let me tell you, it's amazing. Especially since it's going to be super hot here the next couple days. I'm just kind of always having that, always having sweet tea by my side to get me through the day. I thought this Futaba that I drew was very cute. Um, I'm getting better at capturing like the essence of characters that I love. It feels good. It feels very good. I also like that little Makoto up in the top. Again, Makoto's best girl. I date her every time I play Persona 5, just because she's my favorite. posted about this on my Twitter and actually on my Instagram. I posted this sketchbook page that I'm currently working on. I posted it on my Insta. And I was talking about on Twitter how I am no longer scared of drawing like boys <laughs> or like more masculine figures, which is which is kind of alone a huge testament to how much I've grown in the past couple months because for so long I was so scared of drawing boys just because like i don't know i loved drawing like more feminine figures i guess not necessarily like women but just like more feminine more feminine figures with like softer curves and like lots of kind of bendiness and stuff and i always just associated like boys and men and masculine figures with obviously sharper lines and stuff like that and of course while there is a certain you know sharpness to them i find it's not as i don't know something happened to me last fall where and i'm so grateful that it did but i just suddenly had this like switch that went off in my brain where i was like i am no longer going to be scared to draw the things that i'm scared to draw i was like i'm gonna be bad at stuff you know what i want to do i want to practice drawing people i want to practice drawing like men, I want to practice drawing such and such and such and such, and I am no longer going to be afraid of it. And so now, my like feelings of like fear and trepidation that have surrounded so many different subjects has completely transformed into just like overwhelming excitement. And so obviously, I can't work on like everything at once. You know, I want to work on studying dudes i want to work on studying backgrounds studying figures like all of this stuff and it's no longer a sense of like oh i really don't want to do that now it's a sense of like well when am i gonna do it like when it <laughs> like when am i gonna you know find the time for it fit it into my schedule no, not really fit it into my schedule but you know what i mean and it's very it is such like a huge relief and it is such a joy because since that switch went off in my brain, I have had such like fun with my art. And I feel like I'm just so much more excited to explore and try things out. And it's just really exciting and it's really nice. I also really like the way that the dude with the little hoodie kind of looking over his shoulder. I really like how he looked. Um, 
I am. There's like, the lips are a little bit weird and obviously like I can, you know, nitpick all day long. Like the hand on the dude with the hoodie there at the bottom that I'm currently working on, his hand is awful because, <laughs> because hands are hard and they still escape me. But you know what? It is what it is. And we're always learning. I also write here that I still need to work on my folds, which is true also, sorry for, the little burp. Again, it's my sweet tea. I went in with Copics over these, um, but like I say in this little note, um, because I was just using like a Pilot G2 gel pen and I wasn't using like a waterproof fine liner or anything, the ink definitely bled a bit. So that's very good for me to know that I either need to wait a longer time for the ink to dry more, or I just need to work with fine liners so that I can draw over them. And, um, oh, so here, um, I also love, as you can see, I love writing notes to myself just because it helps me be specific about maybe what's off about a sketch or like something that I want to work on. And I am redrawing the like three quarter profile of that dude that I just drew. I'm basically giving it another go because I was like, why does this one look weird? And I think that it's because the eyes were a little too close to the ear. Like they hadn't, I hadn't moved them over enough. And also the proportions, I think the face was like a little bit squashed. Again, this angle gives me a lot of trouble. So I was happy that I tried it again because my second attempt went way better, which is usually the case, but I'm happy I tried it again. And yeah, look at that. Oh, so much better. Again, I also love, you know, the Crescent Render sketchbook because it means that I just get to draw with Sharpie and things. It's very, it's very satisfying. Um, it is, <laughs> I love, I just love being excited to draw again. Also getting to work, working traditionally for this video was also a joy again, because I've been drawing digitally a lot and it's just nice to know that I, I can indeed still draw traditionally. I, ha I haven't lost my edge quite yet. <laughs> laugh a little whenever I go back and edit like you know sketchbook videos or whatever because it just makes me realize how often I like readjust my grip on my pen <laughs> I also hold my pen so tight uh, which it is what it is here I'm drawing Sora my sweet boy I'm basically just using the hoodie backpack jacket guy um, as kind of a reference point. This is something that, well, okay. So I'm not saying obviously she came up with this technique, but this is something that I learned from one of my favorite illustrators, Rebecca Black, where th this is specifically for advice for like drawing people from life. But I found doing this little kind of reference of a referenced sketch made me think of this, but she has a blog post on her website 
where she essentially talks about her process for drawing like likenesses of people where she was drawing Anne Frank, for, for instance. And what she'll do is that she will study the photos of the person and she'll study like the particular lines of the face and she'll draw a couple sketches while looking directly at that like primary reference material. And then she will put that primary reference material away. So she'll put all the photos of Anne Frank away and just look at the sketches that she made. And then she will draw from those sketches. And essentially, um, this helps you keep in mind the important details that like make the person the person while not getting lost in trying to like maintain the realism of it. And so I, fig I find that working in that way or she finds that working in that way makes it way easier to stylize um, people. And I read that blog post probably like two or three years ago now and it changed my life. <laughs> um, Rebecca Green is an incredible illustrator. She has, um, she's a renowned children's book illustrator and her website is full of so much wisdom. She has so many blog posts with like such valuable advice and like insight to her process and stuff. So if you, I, I don't know, want a really good read, <laughs> want a really good artistic, inspiring, helpful, read um go check her out i think her website is called myblankpaper.com but if it's not that then it's probably just you know Re just google rebecca green and you can find her website um she's she's one of my biggest inspirations she's incredible <laughs> and uh i ugh, i've learned so much from her just another pose reference drawing. I do these a lot where I essentially just scroll through Pinterest and find photos of people sitting in interesting ways, like, or maybe not interesting ways, but just like sitting in casual ways or I don't know, standing, being cool. Sometimes it's like from f like, you know, fashion editorials. Sometimes it's just from like photos of people on the street or even Instagram or whatever. But um, I will, just do pose studies to help further my understanding of the human body because we are such strange creatures, let me tell you. Um, and like, so for this one, I love, ooh, sorry, I just bumped into my mic. Um, I love how it turned out. I really, really like the way that the face and the hair turned out. And if I, like in comparison to the reference photo, I think that she's sitting up a little too straight. I find that in the reference photo, she's kind of like leaning forward a little bit more and is, has like kind of her neck sticking out a little bit further. Um, and so again, these are things that I try and take notice of when I do my studies. So that way, if I want to retry the drawing or if I want to try that pose again, those are the adjustments that I can make because, you know, it's the smallest differences in line direction, shape, line weight, whatever, even though I don't really pay attention to line weight because I just draw everything with the same, with the same weight of pen. But um, it's just kind of the smallest differences that can kind of change the whole face. And I think that's why I find like drawing expressions kind of difficult. Like I think about, you know, I follow so many incredible artists on Twitter and I see the like web comics that they do, or I'm thinking even of like, ship art from some artists that I love and you know they draw characters looking really tenderly at one another or they have incredibly 
specific expressions of like puzzlement, confusion, wonder, anger, disgruntlement, um, and again, just the tiniest line adjustments can completely shift the feeling in a face. And I feel like that's probably another area that I need to focus on because again, I feel like a lot of my expressions are kind of samey. I do like the variety on this page where the expressions are similar, but they're all a little bit different. But again, that's just another area that I need to work on. And it's not a bad thing that there's stuff I need to work on. It just means that there's more to learn. And I can't believe that I'm excited about that now. Whereas before I saw it as like some sort of fundamental failure, like of myself as an artist where I was like, I'm not good at everything. Therefore I'm, I was like, I'm not good at everything. Therefore I'm terrible at everything, which is simply untrue. I'm good at a lot of stuff. I'm not great at a lot of stuff, but I am also great at a lot of stuff. And these are, <laughs> these are two truths that can and should coexist within your brain. You are capable of wonderful, amazing things. And there are always going to be more things to learn. There's always going to be stuff to get better at. And I, I just want you to get excited about it in the way that I have gotten excited about it because I just want everyone to, I just, I lived in fear of like my art and growing for so long. And I just want to encourage you to like, you know, dive into the unknown. It's the beauty of the thing. It's the beauty of learning and growth and change and all of that stuff. Um, I feel like I'm getting maybe a little too earnest and wide-eyed in this delivery, but it's great. Also, you know, I had to draw a joker. I had to draw a little joker. His face is definitely a little too round, but that's okay. He's still handsome. God, I love joker. I need to replay Persona 5 again. <laughs> Speaking of Persona 5, I drew a catchy for the first time. And I was actually happy with how he turned out. I've always been, yeah, and I, I was scared to draw a catchy because I was like, he's the prince detective. He's so like pretty, but also kind of threatening. Um, I love a catchy. And so I've always been, you know, a little scared to draw him, but I just went for it and he looks great. <laughs> I, you know, when I first draw characters or currently I feel like I'm slowly starting to get a little more adventurous with my fan art, but I feel like right now I'm still very much in a place where everyone's kind of, you know, looking at the quote unquote camera, kind of standing straight up and down. So I'm slowly working my way towards more fun dynamic poses and I know it'll come, but I'm just glad that I, I'm glad that I could finally draw my sweet Akechi and he looked good. I love his sweater vest. He's so... His, his little coat that he normally wears is so like, I don't know, up uptight. And so I was glad that I could draw him in his little summer sweater vest. Ooh, he's so cute.
like how this last sketch turned out. I also, you know, it's pretty much me. I put them in a, <laughs> I put them in a yellow striped t-shirt, which I feel like is incredibly on brand. Um, and that, this one I technically drew without a reference because I was referencing my sketches from earlier. So, you know, referencing a reference of a reference. You know what I mean? But um, that's, this, this is it. This is all I have for you today. I hope that you enjoyed um, coming along with me as we worked on these little sketches together. And I, look at that, look at it. Oh, it's such a good spread. I'm so happy with how it turned out. And uh, yeah, this is, <laughs> this is where I will leave you for today. I hope you're doing really well. Thank you again to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Thank you to my patrons for being lovely and wonderful and all of those things. And um, I think you're grand. I will talk to you soon and stay frosty. Bye.